I'd like to take a few moments early in the game and discuss some of the basics of the Linux operating system. So in our introduction to Linux section, we're going to talk about the basics of the Linux operating system, where it came from, what the benefits are. In addition, we'll talk about the various Linux features and why Linux has become so popular in the last several years. We'll discuss a little bit about the concepts of open source and the GNU license, as well as discuss something you've probably heard before, and that's the Linux kernel. Linux kernel is definitely going to be a key topic for us because you have to understand how that's going to play into the overall operating system. And finally, we'll talk about Linux distributions. There are so many distributions out there. We're going to focus in on a few key distributions to narrow down the scope of our course and also to familiarize you with some of the common flavors of Linux. So Linux is very much like Windows or Unix or the Macintosh operating system. It's basically an operating system or something referred to as system software. It is the background and the backbone that allows a computer to run user-based software. Things like word processing, MP3 players, things of that nature. Now one of the big advantages of having a Linux operating system around is that it supports a huge variety of hardware platforms. Now the reason that that's important is because a lot of your older technology and a lot of your newer technology even might not be supported by larger companies like Windows. There's a lot of politics involved in what hardware certain operating systems will support. And because Linux is an open source and is worked on by the community, it's more likely that your hardware is going to be supported by the Linux operating system. Another benefit that the Linux operating system has over some of the other free operating systems is that it is a multi-user, multitasking operating system. Meaning that if you're running a Linux server, for example, hundreds of users can log on to that server. In addition, the server can perform hundreds, if not thousands, of tasks seemingly at the same time. Another very large benefit of the Linux operating system is the availability of software. Now one of the things you might have heard in the past is how you can't get this to run on Linux or this doesn't work properly. Well, the beautiful thing is over the last few years, developers have really come together and worked hard to develop a wide range of software to run on the Linux operating system. As a matter of fact, from my experience, I've seen for every single software package that runs on Windows, there are five or six different variations that run on Linux. So as opposed to not being able to find software, it's more likely that you'll have a difficult time choosing which software package to use. Now, probably the most appealing thing about the Linux operating system is its cost. It is free. You can download the Linux operating system from any of thousands, of hundreds of thousands of FTP sites all over the world. So because it's free, everybody wants to share it. So you can see many different variations of Linux distributions and Linux platforms available out there for you. It is also a very powerful operating system because it allows you the flexibility of doing what you want. Whereas in a Windows environment, you're pretty much restricted to what Microsoft Corporation gives you. You're not restricted to that with Linux because the source code is available. Now, Linux was originally developed by Linus Torvalds in 1991. So you can probably guess where the Linux name came from. It was actually a variation of Unix. Now, Linux is released and packaged under the GNU public license, which allows it to be pretty much freely traded, modified, sold, and built by anybody that has the desire to do so. You can read a little bit more about the GNU at www.gnu.org. The GNU is maintained by the Free Software Foundation, or FSF. Now, one of the beautiful things about it, as we've mentioned before, is because Unix was already in place, 
Linux was able to find a home. A lot of the Unix junkies out there kind of move toward Linux because it's a little bit easier to use. It has a lot of functionality. And its low footprint or low overhead to run on systems allowed it to be portable and run on older hardware, which ultimately companies looked at as being a lower total cost of ownership. So it's a free operating system, and it runs on old hardware. You can't ask for much more than that. Now, after it became popular and people realized some of the benefits that can be gained by this free and flexible operating system, a lot of developers and companies started pitching in, and then you started seeing that release of major distributions such as Red Hat and Debian and SUSE Linux.